I dig. My parole hearing comes up in exactly two weeks, four days, three hours, and 20 minutes. I'm not going to let Jerry Kulik, Leo Troy, or Richard Kimball loss it up. You delivered the note, didn't you? Well, they'd have blown the whistle on you. It shouldn't bother you. I'm a cop lover, remember? <laughs> so I was wrong. Anyway, any cat that's got the law on his tail can't be all bad. Will you help me? Uh-uh. I'm going to be right where that nurse can see me all afternoon. I'm going to make sure she knows I'm clean. I'm not going anywhere near that medicine closet. Yeah, well, neither am I. I just want to get out of here before 5.30. Man, I've been saying that for years. Face it, Doc. Those cats mean business. You better give them what they want. I know what that stuff can do to people. What about Jerry and Leo? You know what they can do? With just one word, Doc, they can put you right back in the death house. Whose life is more important to you? Yours or theirs? The Fugitive. A QM production. Starring David Jansen as Dr. Richard Kimball. An innocent victim of blind justice. Falsely convicted for the murder of his wife. Reprieved by fate when a train wreck freed him en route to the death house. Freed him to hide in lonely desperation. To change his identity. To toil at many jobs. Freed him to search for a one-armed man he saw leave the scene of the crime. Freed him to run before the relentless pursuit of the police lieutenant obsessed with his capture. The guest stars in tonight's story, Lynn McCarthy, Greg Morris. Tonight's episode, Wings of an Angel. As the law at his heels, every stranger becomes a potential enemy. Every incident takes on sinister proportions. Dr. Richard Kimball has eluded his pursuers for more than two years. He knows that his freedom depends largely on luck, and that sooner or later, that luck must run out. check. Won't take a minute. Stay in your seats, please. Do you have some identification, sir? All right, thank you, sir. No, please! Let her go, Robbins. Not a chance. Now you get rid of them guns. I'll slash her pretty little throat. I mean it. We won't get very far, Robbins. We've got every road blocked. It'll take more than that to get me back to that crummy prison. You, open that emergency door. as he says. You sit down. Sit down. Come on. Help 
me, please. Easy, honey. You're my insurance. We've got a long way to go together. Hospital's a good 30 miles away. You think you'll make it? Never mind him. This man needs help. Call headquarters. Tell them to contact the prison. Find out where they want Robbins delivered. Right. I'll be all right. Please try not to move. No, I'll be all right. It's... Tell the press he'll have to wait. And we all have problems. But I'll not issue any statement about the escape until I've had a chance to check the details. I'm sorry, that's it. No more calls, Miss J, from anyone. Mr. Maddox. I'll be with the prison board all morning about the escape. They found him, sir. The state police are on the line. They've got Robbins in custody. And Warden Maddox, what about Robbins? Now, we'll get him over here. Our hospital can handle him. Sure, I'll bring the other man, too. We'll take care of him. You help you get Robbins, we owe him that much, don't we? Put Robbins in your car and follow him to the prison. Where to? Prison hospital. No, no prison. Easy, pal. It's the closest hospital around. No, I don't want to go to the prison. Ah, come on, let's get him in the car. Detail? Yes, sir. Hold him out here for a few minutes. Let him see what happened to Robbins. All right. All right, you people, up against this wall. I told you they grabbed Robbins. How'd you know? I heard the guards talking. Some civilian joker played hero. Help the cops. Yeah. Looks like Robin's got in a few good licks himself, huh? Guest. Well, I can't stay. I got a job waiting for me. And... Well, I'll hold it for you. Won't be long. You'll be a celebrity around here. Knife 
him, Doc. We managed it best we could. Look at him. Big hero. Yeah, I'll be all right. I... On the litter, please. Hey, Doc, you better take a look at Robbins. He looks pretty bad. You take this gentleman to the emergency room. I'm Warden Maddox. That was a brave thing you did, Mr. Uh... Egan. George Egan. Thank you for your help, Mr. Egan. A man like Robin, he's dead. Be grateful it didn't happen to you. All right, Deming, let's get him to the morgue. Nice work, cop lover. There are two ways to get out of here, gentlemen. The legal way, and that way. Don't forget it. Back in your place, Kulik. Move it. If his name's Zeke and I'm Bugs Bunny. Him, all right. Who, the guy in the stretcher? His name's Egan. Mm -hmm. He was in our cell block back in Indiana, remember? He killed his wife or something. His name's like, uh, Temple or Pringle, something like that. You mean Doc Kimball? That's it, Doc Kimball. <laughs> it can't be. I mean... You want to bet? I got two cigarette butts, says that's Kimball. All right, Morgan, you take him into work. All right, you people, move out. thought of adding lace curtains, but it would still look pretty grim. You ever been inside a prison before? As a guest, I mean. Uh, no. I hope the sentence is a short one. Well, Mr. Egan, Robbins took a hefty slice out of you. I'd like to keep you under observation for a while. How long? 24 hours. Just to be sure there's no infection. Well, look, doctor, I can't stay that long. You see, I got a job. I got to get to it. I'm going to lose it. What kind of work do you do? A uh, ranch hand. Well, that settles it. Work like that will pop your stitches in a minute. Uh, look, Dr. Willis, You I... risked your life to help capture a killer, Mr. Egan. Now, you're going to get all the care you deserve, whether you like it or not. Now, you get some rest. Dr. Willis? I got a prisoner here with a cut hand. I think he did it on purpose. A fine prisoner. Nobody trusts nobody. Let's see it. Well, that's not too bad. Come on, put something on it. Come on. Everything happens to me, huh? I just lost two cigarette butts. Well, you're not gonna find them in there. Robbins didn't like this place either. That's why he broke out. Hey, a friend of yours? We wear the same uniform. You see, man, under this clean white jacket, I'm just another dirty con like Robbins. Not exactly like Robbins. He was doing time for murder, wasn't he? How do you know I'm not? You're a trustee. Murderers don't get that privilege. Oh. You sure know a lot about it. Mr. Egan, there's some reporters here to see you. Uh, no reporters. They're pretty insistent. Well, tell them I'm uh, not feeling that well. I'll see them tomorrow. All right, I'll tell them, but they're not going to like it.
Those newspaper men, they can make you ten feet tall. I'm a, a little tired. I think I'll get some rest. Headlines, your face on the front page. It works. That's what you want, isn't it? That's the last thing I want. Sorry, but it looks like that's what you're getting. Once Nightingale just fumbled a ball. This is it. Sorry to barge in on you like this, Mr. Egan, but your big news in this town. Now, it won't take a minute. Just a few questions and... Yeah, uh... we'll take a few pictures. Uh, no pictures, please. Why not? Come on, I'll get you a few extra prints. You can send some of the folks back home. Looks like he's a shy, retiring type. I'll answer all your questions. I don't want any pictures taken, that's it. Okay, Bill. Uh, you're uh, new around here, aren't you, Mr. Egan? Yes. Where are you from? Missouri. Joplin, Missouri. I got a job with a ranch uh, just west of here. Is that so? Which one? I know a lot of the ranchers up that way. I don't think the boss would like the publicity. Are you kidding? I know those ranchers. They'd love it. You married Mr. Egan? No. Well, I imagine your family back in Joplin's gonna be mighty proud of you. No family. This guy is the most minus quantity hero I ever met. Did you know Janet Kegler before this uh, little accident? Who? The girl whose life you saved. No. I don't know anyone around here. Hey, maybe we can drum up something between you and this girl, see? Um, damsel in distress, saved by a mysterious stranger. I'm sorry any of this happened. I'd like to forget about it. If you just put it on the back page, you'd be doing me a favor. Sure, okay. Off the record, Mr. Egan, what are you afraid of? Yeah, Robin's dead. He can't hurt you. Well, his, uh, his friends aren't dead. Uh, well, his friends outside of prison, they... Find out uh, what I look like, where I'm staying. I'd try to get to me. Some hero. Well, uh, thanks, anyway. Come on, Bill. Is that all you're afraid of, Robin's friends? Isn't that enough? You should have thought about that before you jumped in. Kimball, all right. Get your butt. Thanks, I told you. All of a sudden, he's a public spirited citizen. Remember when he was sweating out that appeal? Yeah, he lost, didn't he? Yeah, he lost. He's been losing ever since. Now he's free as a bird up in that hospital. So? So let's ruffle his feathers a little bit, huh? What's up in that hospital we can use? Hey, the new nurse. Man, did you see her? Wah! Come on, Leo, will you? This is business, and I mean business. You kidding? I don't kid about a thing like that. You know that. Yeah, but Kimball, he, he can't get it. He'll get it. Otherwise, we'll start remembering. Yeah, that's great, but how are you gonna reach him? Clean linens for the hospital, are they ready yet?
had a message for you. This isn't for me. My name is Egan. Read it anyway. Go ahead, read it. You look a little shook up. If you're not Kimball, why worry? Wait a minute. I'd be pretty foolish to keep on denying it, especially now. Man, you don't come out even. A cat can't run away from the law and play footsie with the law. I only tried to help that Kegler girl. Why? Your wife killed her, aren't you? I didn't kill anyone. Yeah, I know. You're just running for exercise. Look, I don't feel I have to defend myself to you. If you're positive, I'm a killer. Who says I'm positive? Some of my best friends are murderers. But they don't play by your rules. Man, these cats wouldn't help a cop. Or Janet Kegler. Or anyone else. Not even a Richard Kimball. What does that mean? It means you better answer this note. Their way. You got a minute, Mr. Egan? Yeah, sure. Come on in. I brought you a visitor. Come in, Miss Kegg. Hello, Mr. Egan. Hello. I asked the warden if I could, uh... Come see you. I, I want to thank you personally. I mean, you did save my life, and... We're all grateful, Miss Keglin. Warden, I'd be very grateful if I, uh, if I could get out of here sooner. Thank you. No, thank you. Well, the warden says your, your injury isn't too serious. I'm glad of that. I just want you to know, Mr. Regan, that I'd like to take care of any medical expenses. That won't be necessary. He's a guest of the state. Well, I want to do something for you. When do you expect to leave here? Well, they said tomorrow, but, but I'd like to make it sooner. Well, I doubt if it'll be sooner, from what Dr. Willis tells me. If I don't get uh, to that branch, I won't have a job. Oh, that would be terrible. It's like you're being punished. Don't you think you could talk to the doctor, Mr. Maddox? Well, I can try. Well... If you need any transportation, please be sure and call me. Here, I'll give you my phone number. Oh, good. May I write on that? Oh, uh, well, such a little scrap of paper. I'm going to lose that. Here, uh, use this. Thank you. I'll take that, Mr. Egan. You're a lucky man, Miss Deegan. This young lady's phone number is a reward in itself. I guess I am lucky. Well, remember, um, if you need anything, please call. I will. Our patient is beginning to look a little weary, Miss Gagler. We'd better let him get his rest. Well, um... I'll keep in touch with the warden to see how you're getting along. Take care of yourself. Thanks, I will. from two of your old buddies, Jerry Kulik and Leo Troy. Morphine, what do they want with morphine? We got our share of junkies in this country club. Jerry and Leo just want to keep them happy. Needle syringes, where am I gonna get stuff like that? Medicine closet down the hall. Nurse has got the key. They expect me to. Just put the stuff in the hamper with the dirty laundry. Goes downstairs 5.30 this afternoon. They want me to set them up in business. Turn this place into a snake pit. Might be an improvement. 
Now, taking narcotics is not like taking aspirin. That's their worry. Are you in on this? Now, dig. My parole hearing comes up in exactly two weeks, four days, three hours, and 20 minutes. I'm not going to let Jerry Kulik, Leo Troy, or Richard Kimball louse it up. You delivered the note, didn't you? Well, they'd have blown the whistle on you. It shouldn't bother you. I'm a cop lover, remember? <laughs> so I was wrong. Anyway, any cat that's got the law on his tail can't be all bad. Will you help me? Uh-uh. I'm going to be right where that nurse can see me all afternoon. I'm going to make sure she knows I'm clean. I'm not going anywhere near that medicine closet. Yeah, well, neither am I. I just want to get out of here before 5.30. Man, I've been saying that for years. Face it, Doc. Those cats mean business. You better give them what they want. I know what that stuff can do to people. What about Jerry and Leo? You know what they can do? With just one word, Doc, they can put you right back in the death house. Whose life is more important to you? Yours or theirs? Mr. Egan, shouldn't you be in bed? Well, I got a little restless. Uh, there's nothing to do. Well, don't overdo it. Miss Thompson. Oh, yes, doctor. Hold on a minute, please. Yes, doctor. I'll take care of that. Miss Thompson, when all these IV isn't working, the needle came loose. Well, how did that happen? I don't know. I went in to get the laundry, and there it was. understand how that IV could have come loose by itself. Well, Ronaldo tosses around a lot. Maybe he moved his arm in his sleep. Mickey, have you seen my keys? No, ma'am. I had them right in my hand when I answered that telephone. The medicine closet's always locked, isn't it? Mickey. 
Maybe you left them on the ward, on Rinaldi's bed, maybe. We're not going to do another thing till I find them. I am cracking up. They've been right here all along. Well, I guess I better take the laundry down, huh? Well, it's a little early yet. Are you sure you have everything? Oh, yes, ma'am. Everything's here. I'm sure of it. Mr. Regan. This little conspiracy of yours, quite an achievement. I don't know what you mean. You know perfectly well what I mean. All three of you, working in perfect harmony. The unholy trio. Look, I don't know who you... You, Warden Maddox and Miss Kegler. All campaigning for your release. I... I didn't mean to gang up on you. <laughs> well, it's been almost eight hours since I brought you in. Let's take another look at that wound. Get your robe off. you people, let's get this laundry sorted. Well, now, come on, you're sorting laundry, not eggs. Hewlett, you sort this one, huh? Both of you, sort that one. Well, I'd prefer it if you'd wait till morning. Well, Dr. Willis, I... I know, I know. I heard all the arguments from the warden and the Kegler girl. I mustn't punish you by keeping you here. I have to be at that ranch job by six. I have to find a place to live. All right. But you'll have to take it easy. No heavy lifting and no wrestling with runaway heifers. All right. Drop by tomorrow after work. I'd like to take another look at it. I will. I had a suitcase on the bus. So... Oh, yes. The police sent it over. Let me get Mr. Egan's suitcase, will you? We get delivered on time. You better not be here when they hang it out to dry. Thanks, Mickey. For what? The loose needle on Rinaldi's IV. I don't know what you're talking about. Two more weeks and I'll be changing clothes. I'm gonna get me a white button-down shirt with stiff cuffs. And one of those narrow suits with the skinny lapels. A pair of Italian shoes with heels that click like dice when I walk. You got a job waiting for you? Sure. You gotta have one to get a parole. Doc Willis put in a good word for me out of the county hospital. I'm gonna work in physiotherapy. If you ever need a sitz bath, just mention my name. You must rate pretty high around here. Yeah. I got them all conned into believing I'm a model prisoner. 
Ain't that a kick? <laughs> Deming, I want to see you in my office. Yes, sir. Well, you really blew it. I never would have thought you were that stupid. What's bugging him? This. What is it? Morphine and a hypodermic kit. Kind of a junkie's dream. Well, what's that got to do with me? Well, it seems someone smuggled it down to the laundry in a hamper. And guess who took that hamper down there? Well, listen, I... Now, I... you listen to me. You're the only trustee we got up here. Who else would have done it? Maybe Nurse Thompson or Dr. Willis? Now, come on with me. I'll take that morphine, Fogarty, and the syringe. The seal on that bottle's been broken, Doctor. Still morphine. How do you know Mickey broke it? It happens time after time with these men, Mr. Egan. We give them every chance to prove themselves, and sooner or later, one of them pulls a fool stunt like that. Don't waste your time worrying about him. He's had it. this has been locked all day. Yes, sir. And Deming was right here with me. But you did misplace the keys. Just for a moment. I found them on my desk. Unlock the door, will you please? Who was the nurse on duty last night? Miss Considine. She comes on at midnight. She has a key, hasn't she? Uh, no, sir. She uses this one. Your orders, doctor. Did she take the usual narcotics inventory? Yes, sir. In the morning before she left, everything was in order. Then the morphine had to be stolen sometime today. Why, that's the seal off that morphine bottle, Doctor. It must have been opened right here. Maybe our friend took a small pop for himself before he delivered it to the others. No, no, that wouldn't be possible. Someone would have seen him. Well, if it wasn't Deming... It had to be one of us. It had to be someone who had access to this closet. Someone with enough medical knowledge to recognize the morphine bottle and know how to use it. Are you accusing me, Doctor? Let's face it, Miss Thompson. You're an excellent nurse. I'm a pretty good MD. But we're both lousy detectives. Mr. Egan? Go what? Well, any place you like. The warden thought you'd need a ride into town. Oh, that's all right. I'll well, manage. It's a long walk. You're not exactly ready for road work, you know. Yeah, well, uh, you just take me to the uh, bus terminal. Sure. Just a minute. Oh, haven't you gone yet? Well, I wanted to say goodbye. And thanks for everything, Miss Thompson. You're very welcome, Mr. Egan. Oh, by the way, Miss Kegler called. I told her what time you were being discharged. All right, thank you. A doctor. I'm going to see you tomorrow after work, huh? Yes. I wanted to say goodbye to Mickey Deming. What's going to happen to him if he is guilty? Smuggling narcotics to convicts? That's a rough charge. He'll lose his parole. Don't you feel too sorry for him, Mr. Egan? Something like this happens. The prisoners aren't the only ones to suffer. Well, who else? Warden Maddox, for instance. Last night, the prison break. Now this. He'll be lucky if the prison board doesn't burn him at the stake. Well, it's not his fault. Well, he's been fighting those chowderheads on the board for years, trying to set up a more liberal prison system. A mess like this can set it all back to the Dark Ages. Now, you better get out of here before they start questioning you. Goodbye. I intend to question every man on that laundry detail, Dunning. Now, you can save yourself and your buddies a lot of trouble by settling this thing here and now. 
Don't you realize what you're doing? If you're guilty, you're implicating at least 20 innocent men. If I'm guilty? And if you're protecting someone, you're a fool. You're giving up your parole, your freedom. For what? To spend another few years in this place. Is any one of those men worth it? No. Then tell me the truth. Are you protecting someone? What are you afraid of, Mickey? Can he hurt you that much? Or maybe you're afraid you'll hurt him, whoever he is. Can you hurt anyone more than you're hurting yourself? Answer me. Maybe. Or maybe what? Maybe I'm one of them bleeders, Warden. You know? Protecting some poor slob, because I feel sorry for him. Maybe if I tell what I know, he'll go straight to the death house. How's that sound? Okay? Don't play games with me. See? I tell you the truth and you get sore. Nobody understands us bleeders. This morning, you didn't want any part of this place. Now you act like you can't tear yourself away. I'll, uh... I'll be right back, okay? Wait for me. Sure. Excuse me, uh, is Warden Maddox in? Yes, sir. He's left orders not to be disturbed. But how long will he be tied up? At least another hour. May I ask? An hour. Is Mickey Deming in with him? You're Mr. Egan, aren't you? Yes. I'd like to leave him a note, uh, just to say thank you. I'm sure he'd appreciate that. May I have an envelope? This require an answer? Oh, no, I'll uh, be long gone before he reads it. Thank you. Warden's office. No, I'm sorry, Doctor. He's not taking any calls. Let's go. Call the guards, Miss Jane. Have Deming sent back to his cell. Yes, sir. Dr. Willis wants you to call. Says it's very important. And Mr. Egan stopped in. Left you this note. Third degree's over. Now, Mr. I sure had you pegged wrong. Any man who'd smuggled dope into a prison, for any reason. Excuse me, Warden. Where'd you get that? What? That note. Kimball. You were telling the truth. Give me a break, Warden. He could have left me to take that rap. He didn't have to write you that note. I have to send that morphine to Kulik and Troy, either. Now, get me the gate. Just a minute. Good luck to you, Mr. Egan. Thanks. Excuse me. Let's put that suitcase in the trunk. 
Mr. Regan, I was afraid I'd missed you. I called the hospital and, and the nurse said you were leaving. Slower, please. And put out an alert for him. He got away? For now. I wipe that smile off your face. Why were they shooting at us, Mr. Egan? My name is Kimball, Richard Kimball. I'm sorry, I still don't understand. They think I'm a murderer. A murderer? You? I don't believe that. They believe it. If you really want to help me, drive to the bus terminal. When the police get there, tell them I bought a ticket to any place. Okay. Well, this makes us even, huh? Sorry, Mr. Maddox, but Dr. Willis insisted. Here, take a look at this lab report. And what about it? The seal on that morphine bottle was broken. The bottle must have been opened. So I had the solution analyzed. Go on, read it. No morphine. Not a drop. That stuff that Egan or Kimball or whatever his name is smuggled down to the prisoners. Nothing but distilled water. You think Kimball knew that? Of course he knew it. How do you think the water got into this jar? After all, the man knew what he was doing. He was a doctor, wasn't he? is on the run, every stranger is a potential enemy, every friend a surprise. For Richard Kemble, the only real friend is the darkness and the road that has no end.
that's him, all right. Who, the guy in the stretcher? His name is Egan. Hmm. He was in our cell block back in Indiana, remember? He killed his wife or something. His name's like, uh, Temple or Pringle, something like that. You mean Doc Kimball? That's it, Doc Kimball. <laughs> it can't be. I mean... You want to bet? I got two cigarette butts, says that's Kimball. All right, Morgan, you take him into work. All right, you people, move out. thought of adding lace curtains, but it would still look pretty grim. You ever been inside a prison before? As a guest, I mean. Oh, no. I hope the sentence is a short one. Well, Mr. Egan, Robbins took a hefty slice out of you. I'd like to keep you under observation for a while. How long? 24 hours. Just to be sure there's no infection. Well, look, doctor, I can't stay that long. You see, I got a job. I got to get to it. I'm going to lose it. What kind of work do you do? A uh, ranch hand. Well, that settles it. Work like that will pop your stitches in a minute. Uh, look, Dr. Willis, I... You risked your life to help capture a killer, Mr. Egan. Now, you're going to get all the care you deserve, whether you like it or not. Now, you get some rest. Dr. Willis? I got a prisoner here with a cut hand. I think he did it on purpose. Fine prisoner. Nobody trusts nobody. Let's see him. Well, that's not too bad. Come on, put something on it. Come on. Everything happens to me, huh? I just lost two cigarette butts. Well, you're not gonna find them in there. Robbins didn't like this place either. That's why he broke out. A friend of yours. We wear the same uniform. Still alive. Hospital's a good 30 miles away. You think you'll make it? Never mind him. This man needs help. Call headquarters, tell them to contact the prison, find out where they want Robbins to live. Right. I'll be all right. Please try not to move. No, I'll be all right. Tell the press he'll have to wait. Now, we all have problems. But I'll not issue any statement about the escape until I've had a chance to check the details. Now, I'm sorry, that's it. No more calls, Miss J, from anyone. Mr. Maddox. I'll be with the prison board all morning about the escape. They found him, sir. The state police are on the line. They've got Robbins in custody. And Warden Mannix, what about Robbins? Now, we'll get him over here. Our hospital can handle him. Sure, I'll bring the other man, too. We'll take care of him. You help you get Robbins, we owe him that much, don't we? Put Robbins in your car and follow him to the prison. Where to? Prison hospital. No, no prison. Easy, pal. It's the closest hospital around. No, I don't want to go to the prison. Now, come on, let's get him in the car.
Guard. All right, hold it. The laundry detail? Yes, sir. Hold them out here for a few minutes. Let them see what happened to Robbins. All right, you people, up against this wall. Now, Dick, my parole hearing comes up in exactly two weeks, four days, three hours, and 20 minutes. I'm not going to let Jerry Kulik, Leo Troy, or Richard Kimball louse it up. You delivered the note, didn't you? Well, they'd have blown the whistle on you. It shouldn't bother you. I'm a cop lover, remember? <laughs> so I was wrong. Anyway, any cat that's got the law on his tail can't be all bad. Will you help me? Uh-uh. I'm going to be right where that nurse can see me all afternoon. I'm going to make sure she knows I'm clean. I'm not going anywhere near that medicine closet. Yeah, well, neither am I. I just want to get out of here before 5.30. Man, I've been saying that for years. Face it, Doc. Those cats mean business. You better give them what they want. I know what that stuff can do to people. What about Jerry and Leo? You know what they can do? With just one word, Doc, they can put you right back in the death house. Whose life is more important to you? Yours or theirs? The Fugitive. A QM production. Starring David Jansen as Dr. Richard Kimball. An innocent victim of blind justice, falsely convicted for the murder of his wife. Reprieved by fate when a train wreck freed him en route to the death house. Freed him to hide in lonely desperation, to change his identity, to toil at many jobs. Freed him to search for a one-armed man he saw leave the scene of the crime. Freed him to run before the relentless pursuit of the police lieutenant obsessed with his capture. The guest stars in tonight's story, Lynn McCarthy, Greg Morris. Tonight's episode, Wings of an Angel. has the law at his heels, every stranger becomes a potential enemy. Every incident takes on sinister proportions. Dr. Richard Kimball has eluded his pursuers for more than two years. He knows that his freedom depends largely on luck, and that sooner or later, that luck must run out. check. Won't take a minute. Stay in your seats, please. Do you have some identification, sir? All right, thank you, sir. No, please! Let her go, Robbins. Not a chance. Now you get rid of them guns. I'll slash her pretty little throat. I mean it. We won't get very far, Robbins. We've got every road blocked. It'll take more than that to get me back to that crummit prison. You, open that emergency door. 
do as he says. You sit down. Sit down. Come on. Help me, please. Easy, honey. You're my insurance. We've got a long way to go together. They grabbed Robbins. How'd you know? I heard the guards talking. Some civilian joker played hero. He helped the cops. like Robin's got in a few good licks himself. Relax, you're a guest. Well, I can't stay. I got a job waiting for me. And... Well, I'll hold it for you. Won't be long. You'll be a celebrity around here. We could. Look at him. Big hero. Yeah, I'll be all right. I... On the litter, please. Hey, Doc, you better take a look at Robbins. He looks pretty bad. You take this gentleman to the emergency room. I'm Warden Maddox. That was a brave thing you did, Mr. Uh... Egan. George Egan. Thank you for your help, Mr. Egan. A man like Robin, he's dead. Be grateful it didn't happen to you. All right, Deming, let's get him to the morgue. Nice work, cop lover. There are two ways to get out of here, gentlemen. The legal way and that way. Don't oh, forget it. Back in your place, Kulik. Move it. If his name's Zeke and I'm Bugs Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> 